Welcome to my lecture online. On the previous video, we showed you how we determined the sum and the difference of angles for the sine function. Now we're going to do the same for the cosine function, and we're going to use the exact same graph as we had before, and we're going to define the sine of A and the cosine of A differently this time compared to the last time, and we'll show you why. Notice that there's only one triangle for which we can associate the angle B. But we have two triangles, we have this one right here and this one right here, where we can associate the angle A. Now on the previous video, when we were trying to find the sum of the difference of angles for the sine, we defined the sine of A as QT, so it would be this side right here, that's the opposite side to the angle A, divided by OQ, which is the uh, hypotenuse of this triangle, and we define the cosine of A as PR, which is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse PQ in terms of the angle A over there. Now we're going to reverse that. We're going to define the sine using the small triangle over here and the cosine using the bigger triangle. So let's do that. So the sine of A can be defined as the opposite side, which is RQ divided by the hypotenuse, which is PQ. And cosine of A, using the big triangle, can be defined as the ratio of O to T divided by the hypotenuse O to Q. Notice that in both cases, we have PQ defined over here, and we have OQ defined over here. So those two are known. So let's go ahead and put a little dash circle around those two. So those are known quantities. PQ is defined as sine of B and OQ is defined as the cosine of B. Now, what we're going to do is we're now going to define RQ and OT. So on the first one, we can say that RQ is equal to the sine of A times PQ, which of course can be written as the sine of A multiplied times PQ, and PQ is the sine of B. And then we're going to do the same with OT. OT is equal to the cosine of A times OQ, which is equal to the cosine of A times OQ, which is the cosine of B. All right. So now what we need to do is define the cosine of A plus B. So now we have the cosine of A plus B. And how do we define that? Well, here we have A plus B, so now we have to use this triangle right here, right there. And so the cosine of A plus B would be the adjacent side, which is OS, divided by the hypotenuse, which is OP. Again, adjacent side, OS, divided by the hypotenuse, OP. Now notice that OP was defined as being equal to 1. So we arbitrarily set it equal to 1. So this is simply going to be OS. Now, OS can be defined as OT minus ST. So that's OS. And ST is the same length as RQ. So we can write this as OT minus RQ. Now notice that OT is defined right here and RQ is defined right there. So we simply now have to take the difference of those two. So the cosine of A plus B therefore is equal to OT which is defined right here which is the cosine A times the cosine of B minus RQ which is defined as sine A times sine B. And notice, of course, that's exactly what we had up here. That is indeed the identity for the cosine of A plus B. Now, to find the cosine of A minus B, what we're going to do is we're going to let B equal negative B. So if we do that, we end up then with the cosine of A minus B. So we replace a plus B by a minus B, which is equal to the cosine of A times the cosine of minus b minus the sine a times the sine of minus b. 
And then, of course, we realize that the cosine of minus b is equal to the cosine of b. So the cosine of a negative angle is equal to the cosine, cosine of the same positive angle. So we could say that this is equal, therefore, to the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a. Now here we realize that the sine of a negative angle is the negative of the sine of the positive angle. So it's going to be equal to times minus the sine of positive b. And of course, the minus times the minus makes it a plus, and so therefore we can say that the cosine of a minus b can be written as a cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. And there we have shown, oh, that's not a good looking b, there we go. All right, so there we have shown the identity of the cosine of a plus b and the cosine of a minus b. It's a little tricky, but it works, and that is how it's done.